What's going on? It's Luke Mann, and we're going to be working on this Symphony X guitar solo that I have actually already learned, so it'll be a little bit different, but I mean, you just want the goods anyway, right? So anyway, this one is off Divine Wings of Tragedy. It's called Of Sins and Shadows. Yeah, and one thing to keep in mind is that I'm tuned down a half step. I believe Mike is tuned to a full step, full step down. But yeah, the thing is, there's this weird thing going on. It looks like he's playing the open E for this chug. So. And yeah. I'm playing open E as well, and it's in tune, but then he's playing like a C chord later when I'm playing a B chord. So I don't know if he has like his E string down just like one half step and everything else is down a half step. Very unlikely. But anyway, that's that's kind of like what I've been seeing. That's a long-winded way of me telling you that I'm in E flat, so if you're going to learn this solo, uh, tune, tune your guitar to E flat, if you're going to learn it in D standard, just take all my fingerings and put them up a, uh, a half step. Also, there's two versions of him playing this solo. There's the album version, and then there's this cool guitar chapter thing that he did in like the early 90s, or yeah, I'm pretty sure early 90s, like 94, or maybe 97 even. And he's playing it different, so I would just uh, you know keep keep that in mind as well. So I I started learning that version, but then I ended up with the album version. So yeah, you can of course just follow this if you want to play along with the album. I figure that's what everyone wants to, but he's the type of guy you wouldn't know this unless you're a guitar player that likes to keep things kind of like on the fly. So I noticed that everything he does live, it's always different every single time. Even on, uh, but it's always killer. It's always in time and it's always cool. It always has some like crazy odd note groupings. So anyway, all right. Starting with the uh, B minor seven tapped arpeggio. And by the way, when, when he, uh, he puts these notes in here, these ones there, we end up with a D major 7. Oh, I'm sorry, G major 7. Yeah, that would be a G major 7. So, starting at the 14th fret, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk through them. I'm going to talk about it because the tabs are right there, you know. So let's just like read the tabs. It's where everyone prefers anyway. But this, I'll, I'll just tell you about each of these licks, right? So, this is a, a B minor 7 arpeggio. So, when he's tapping like this. These notes here, B, D, and F sharp, those are exclusively uh, B minor. When we add the, this A note here, that's our seven. And then he just throws these in as an extension. This makes it some like weird ass chord. I'm not smart enough to understand which chord that is. Well, I suppose I am. I mean, what, what, what would it be? So, so if we start on B, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13. Is it 12, 13 chord? <laughs> I mean, it's closest to a G major seven, so it's kind of like harmonizing 
uh, B minor with a G major 7 at the same time. Just like how I would put it. One thing I would add to is that this technique comes a lot from the hammer ons. So, not a lot of guitar players, I notice, um, just because I do a lot of coaching, um, talking to people and helping them with their, with their struggles is that not everyone is super keen with the hammering on. <coughs> hammering on from nowhere, it's called. So, so we're literally starting on, uh, we're, we're not starting on a note. It's different than playing a note, for instance, if I were to play. first notes versus just going to them. I think the hardest part is getting from the tapped notes to the next to the next string. Just those transitions there. That's where I'm going. That's a really hard time. Uh, but besides that, yeah, it's it's just you know you're hammering each of these notes. One thing that may not be coming across is that when it gets to the top, which is this little bit. I hear that little slide. So he's pulling off 21. 17, 14, and then he slides up you know, to maybe 19 before he does that bend on the 21st fret. And then this vibrato is like very much with the bar, but it comes up. I really like the whammy bar vibrato that, that goes up. My other tendency is to kind of go down, but usually it sounds sick going up. And uh, if you think about how we do vibrato on the guitar 99% of the time, the note is going sharp, you know? That's what happens when you bend a string, the tension increases, so. Very, very similar thing there, hammer on, pull off. And then it's in one of those dips. I love coming into notes like that. So, yeah, that's like a Jason Becker thing, you know, like we do it in, um, for, I'm forgetting the melody right now, but like Altitudes, he does stuff like that. I'll play it if I, if I think of the melody, but yeah, he, that's where that stuff comes from. So this, these, by the way, are little chromatic notes, little chromatic chromaticism happening. So let's see where he is. This is the uh, this is the five of that B minor. That would give this chromatic note the flat five, you know, which is like the blues note that we use all the time. Right, which you've heard like thousands. Of so. That, that's what he's doing there. You hear this a lot in like Gypsy Jazz. Uh, yeah, just to explain a little bit about that, he's popping into a little diminished. Arpeggio. Now, I believe this one is pretty straightforward in the sense that it's not. It's not. It's kind of a 
the opposite of, of what typically happens with diminished arpeggio. So, so usually uh, guys are doing diminished arpeggios. You'll just end up, if you take the root for instance, and then we'll go down one half step. You know, that's, that's where they'll start their diminished runs. And this kind of puts them nicely into harmonic minor or dominant Phrygian sort of territory. And with diminished arpeggios, it's 50-50. What I mean when I say that is like, if we're on, uh, it's, <laughs> what is a good metaphor for this? It's like, uh, yeah, it's kind of like a circuit board that has like a whole series of wires, you know, and, and there's two inputs, you know? And so like, you go on the first input and that whole board lights up. You know, and everything's working, all these light bulbs are on and all that. And but everything on the, the other board, you know, like let's say that's that's the green wires, everything on the pink wires is shut off entirely. And uh, if anything on the pink wire were to try to kind of resonate with it, it would just sound like dissonant, you know, and horrible. But sometimes that's the effect. So that said, um, yeah, to diminished arpeggios will, will either be perfect or the opposite of that. And uh, the only difference is one half step, because beyond that half step, you can continue over the, the whole fret. Right, so he kind of, he, he takes the uh, unorthodox approach with this diminished arpeggio, but let's see if we can see what he's thinking, you know? Yeah, so the thing about the, the flat five, as, as it occurs naturally in the scale, is, is it is, uh, it's, it's the diminished scale that has nothing to do with harmonic minor. It's the one that would be like in your pentatonic scale. If you built a diminished chord or diminished arpeggio off of uh, the actual flat five, as it occurs in the scale. So, as opposed to the, the, the one that you start using when, when we kind of activate harmonic minor. You start playing that minor major seven chord, stuff like this. Or uh, turn the minor three into a dominant seventh arpeggio. Either of those things happening. Uh, so. So that's what he does here, I notice. I noticed that this arpeggio is kind of connected to the flat five. So, you know, that's where it's at. And, yes, yeah, so we're doing this little pull off here. Slide there from 12 to 9. Yeah, really cool note groupings that happen there. Notice the way that I'm picking it. The only thing I think I'm sweeping is like these, these notes coming down. The D, G, and uh, E string in opposite order. So coming from the 9, the 10, Is that's a five because uh, yeah when you play fives 
it has that that sort of vibe and they do a lot of riffs that are vibe. It's like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. So like right there. One, two, three, four, five, four. Yeah, that's a five note group thing. There's, there's really cool fives that are in Michael Romeo's playing. So, yeah, I really appreciate those a lot. You know, it's, it's kind of hard to get together. I would say, like, putting this up to speed yesterday, this was the hardest part for sure. I still was, like, a little bit behind you know, when I signed up. So, make sure you get that killer of the harmonic, you know, because he's going. So yeah, we'll see what happens, man. I'm not gonna stress about it. Warm up the old pause anyway. So yeah, to, to play this nice and slow, we got some more. They are called 20th notes, I don't care what anyone says. Because I did the math. I did the math. I'm teaching this shit all day, it pisses me off. His life is like, um, you're, you're telling me that we have, we have quarter notes, we have eighth notes, we have 16th notes, but between eighth notes and 16th notes, we have triplets. We not have like courtlets. Yeah. Do we not have like that's kind of tripping me out. So so I did the math. It turns out triplets are just twelfth notes. Sixteenth notes, of course are sixteenth notes. Sixteenth notes. Quintuplets are um, yeah, twentieth notes. Sextuplets are twenty fourth notes. Uh, septuplets or 28th notes, yeah, and on it goes, it's just, it's just, uh, multiples of four, it's like really simple, yeah, so when you know that from 28 to 32nd notes, you have a septuplet to an octuplet, it's super, super simple stuff actually, but anyway, we're starting with the 16th notes, a nice slide, this is like the G harmonic minor scale. All right, so starting up here. Kind of misses with the pattern there a little bit, but it's fine because he goes into this five lick, which if you're trying to get into fives, I think this is like a really great one to start with. You know, just this. Thank <laughs> you. 
is sick nonetheless. And um, yeah, what I would say about this lick is, is uh, talk about the screen skipping a little bit. So we're going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. These licks are objectively easier starting on the upstroke. I don't like to plan out which which stroke I'm gonna start a lick on or end a lick on because then it becomes confusing, you know, especially like now I have to stress about like when I get out of this sixteenth note lick, like my pitch stroke has to be just right. That like that's how people mess up, you know. So I just go up here like whatever. So what I notice is that I like to do an upstroke for these slides and stuff. This type of stuff happens all the time. Like that stuff happens. So so for that stuff, I, my muscle memory is to do like a little upstroke and then that way I can start on the down, which I like to do. <laughs> that puts me on a down for this part, making making the string skip like as hard as possible. I like to do the inside pick. So, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, So that's really cool and kind of weird, you know, we end up with five, five, three, five, three, five, 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 five. Yeah, and that's the lick nice and slow. I'm using G harmonic minor here, you know, this is pretty, uh, pretty standard stuff. And also, if you look, we have a diminished pedgy. You know, here's like the whole arpeggio. Here's the whole thing that's happening. But we're we're basically using just parts of that. Yeah. Or I mean, uh, another way of putting it is, we have a scale here. We're going. Diminished scale right there. Basically, just doing half and whole steps all the time, or whole and then half steps all the time. There's another piece of that, like 50 50 scale. There's a couple of scales that are like that. You know, whole tone is another one that's like that. Everything's in or everything's up. And the only difference is like one half step, because you're just doing the same thing. It's a linear scale, it's like every single thing is exactly the same. And Yeah, you're either going to be on and it's going to fit the chord really, really well. That has to do with, like, for instance, whole tone scale. You're starting on when the. I think it's any note but the five will work. Yeah. Let's say we're playing a dominant chord. This is so relevant to the lesson. <laughs> that works well there. You know? Versus if you play that. Yeah, it still sounds pretty cool. That's how music is. You know, I like to call that being polarizing with the uh, playing, but Mike, Mike plays in like diatonic for this whole thing. Maybe not so much the diminished thing, but it's still, it's all in there. It's like, you could know, just chalk up those quote unquote accidentals as, as the blue note or like the flat five, stuff like this. All right, so, we're going here. 
what we're talking about. This this part, right? G minor kind of time. So within that we have the minor scale. And so he's playing this this note here. Hammer on pull off, right? 15, 17. G string is that 18? And then in my mind, I like to think that he double hammer ons. Does double hammer on pull up on the second time. So it's like the flat five right now, 18th fret to G. And then it's to the root. Next is like these really cool legato things. Yeah, so it's still the G minor scale, but it has a really nice uh, niceness to it, which makes me think, just off the hand, like the, they're probably on the. Uh, they go to the D sharp chord or the, the F chord. And the reason I say that is because D sharp will give us that Lydian sound. And it has kind of like this ethereal tone to it, so I won't be surprised if it was that. If not that, then uh, I think G is the next like, the sounding major chord for, for this harmony. All right, but the, when I talk about three note per strings patterns, I like to talk about low, middle, high, basically means like the highest note of the three, the lowest note of the three, and the most middle is the note of the three. So, so the pattern is middle, high, low. And it's a really cool pattern. I always thought you had to do like fancy stuff to make this happen. Yeah, but Mike is just going so it's high, middle, low. 8, 10, 6, 8, 10, 6, 8, 10, 7, 8, 10, 7, uh, what is this, yeah, 8, 10, 6, 8, 10, 6, now he switch switches the pattern around, he's just going low, middle, high. Kind of speeds up there, kind of changes the subject. Yeah, so I think it's like either 16th or 3s. And then it, and it changes the sixth up with so. And then this is like what I was talking about earlier. Where he's he takes what normally would be a minor seven chord, G minor seven, just a major seven. So now we're in harmonic minor you know, for for G, you know, but it would be dominant for G and D. So, because he likes that classical sound, that's how you get that classical sound. Plays diminished arpeggios built off of that 
Like, he plays this whole scale, right? This whole G minor scale. Everything's diatonic. <laughs> That's the raised seven in the scale. Okay, so yeah, next we're chugging on B, right? Simple enough. That's the part that I was talking about earlier, and I was like, uh, yeah, I don't. It's weird because I see his finger and he's a C, but yeah. it looked like he was playing B. E. Oh yeah, this diminished drum. This is just like fully diminished. You know? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> some of this is from the instructions, so I gotta be, I gotta be clear. You can listen to it because now I'm not even sure that the record does the double tap or does just one. So you, you'll have to decide. Do you want to tap that? Or do you, do you want to double tap that? <laughs> All right, so so here we go. You know, I start out with my pinky. It feels comfortable. And then I like to switch my ring finger. I just realized. As far as cleanliness and all that, you know, you want to take your time with this stuff. You want to get the string skipping like dialed. Get it dialed. Man. Come on, come on, man. Play, play a band with <laughs> this guy. We, we all love him. We all imitate him all the time. But he's always calling me, dude. You just gotta get parts dialed. <laughs> Matchy matchy, this this guitar is matching this shirt like really well. That's pretty cool. That was a thing back in the day. This guy Kurt James, freaking ripper. Listen to uh, the villa. <laughs> Off uh, Doctor Mastermind. I don't know. What just look up Dr. Mastermind in the villa. Yeah, total ripper. But he would always have shirts that matched his guitar paint jobs. Now I'm that guy. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, so, yes, this, this last diminished part. I was just talking about the muting. So, I have an easier time muting starting with these lower strings using pointer, pinky. took a look at it and Michael was doing it on that video. I was like, God, that's so cool. And um, first I was like, I don't know if I'll learn it. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult. Well, I did actually learn it anyway. And I think that's what you should do too. If you're having, you know, it's like, it's kind of a tough lick. Especially if it's not coming out clean, just keep playing it. <laughs> so many of these licks, like, yeah, that's the case at first, but then just get it, you know, you just keep, keep playing it, and it cleans up too, but you have to, you have to look into that stuff, yeah, so I know I rambled a lot, and hopefully you learned something, that would be cool, and also, um, Just keep in mind, like, when you try to learn solos like this, take your time with them, you know? Get, get them all killer. And if you've been 
doing that for a long time is still like really difficult and stuff. Clock stay the dude. Meanwhile, I'm just here transforming to our players' lives, to say the least. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'd be always happy to, to just message you and see what your situation is like.